Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for watching. So for those of you who do not have me on Instagram or Snapchat or any of my other social medias, yes, I cut all my hair off. I'm so happy that I did it. I'm obsessed with it. Oh, my hair girl is the bomb. I will put her Instagram in the description box below so you guys can check her out. She's literally amazing with color, with cuts, just literally, I feel like she gave me life again. I needed this haircut so bad and I love it. So I wanted to take today's video to just give you guys a super in-depth video on my face routine. So basically I'm going to show you guys all of my favorite face products that I've been using lately and my favorite techniques to apply my face. I feel like in most videos I spend so much time focusing on the eyes um, because I don't know, I feel like that's what people really like to see, like they like to see different eye looks. Um, and I usually will either just completely skip over the face part or just skim through it pretty quickly. So I wanted to create this video so that I can link it below in all my other videos. So if you ever want to refer back to see how I do my face, you have an entire video on just face stuff. Yeah. So without further ado, let's get started. So I'm just gonna tuck my hair behind my ears. Push it back, oh, my fabulous hair. So as you can tell, I already did my eyes. Um, the video for this eye look, I will link it below. I did the top of my eyes, but I haven't done my bottom lash line or lashes yet. I like to do that last once I've done my concealer and everything. That's when I like to smoke on my bottom lash line and then I put on my lashes after. So if you wanna see how I got this eye look, it's my Thanksgiving eye look, I will post it, I will link it below in the description box. But now that the top of my eyes are done, I'm gonna start working on my face. I've already done my eyes and my eyebrows, as you can see. So the first product that I always, always, always start with, whether it's on me or on a client, is the Hangover RX Primer. It does not matter if you're dry, it doesn't matter if you're oily, this primer is amazing. It just puts down such a nice base for foundation to sit on top of, because even if you're oily, um, you still need moisture on your face. So this does a really good job of moisturizing the skin, um, and it smells so good, it smells like I don't even know, like a beach vacation. It smells amazing. And it just feels like your skin drank a glass of water because there's a difference between moisture and oiliness. And even if you're oily, you still need moisture. So you wanna make sure that whether it's um, a moisturizer or a primer, whatever it is, you wanna put down something really nice and hydrating on your skin so that all of your makeup sits nicely on top and kind of like absorbs into that primer and it doesn't just sit on top of your face because that's when it looks cakey. Next, because I'm a complete and total psychopath, I also go in with a Smashbox Photo Finish Primer Water. You can totally skip this step or you can just use this primer. You don't need both primers. I just like to use two because I like to make sure that my face ain't going nowhere. So I'm just gonna spritz this all over my face. And this also feels very, very, very nice and hydrating on the skin, which is fabulous. From there, I go on with foundation. I have three go-to foundations right now. I will show them to you. The first one is the Urban Decay All Nighter Foundation. I really didn't think I was gonna like this foundation. I've actually had it for quite some time and I just used it for the first time like two weeks ago. It is amazing. When I saw that it was matte, I was like, ooh, you know I like more luminous, dewy foundations. So I didn't think I was gonna like this very much and I know it's very full coverage and I usually don't like very full coverage foundations because I feel like they look cakey, but this one is Literally incredible, guys. This foundation is on another level. It's matte, but it's not cakey. It doesn't make you look cakey. It just makes you look like a porcelain doll. Like, it's awesome. So I've been using this. The other foundation I've been using a lot of is the Hourglass Vanish Stick Foundation or the Vanish Foundation Stick. Yeah. Um, this foundation, again, same thing. Very full coverage, very lightweight. It makes your skin look flawless. You look like a porcelain doll. Like It is so good. I love this foundation. The last foundation that I've been using like crazy is the L'Oreal Infallible Pro Matte Foundation. I used to use this a lot before and I kind of stopped using it. I don't know why. And I recently started using it again and I love it. I've been really into matte foundations lately. I don't know why. The Infallible Pro Matte is a matte finish and the Urban Decay Naked Skin is like a matte finish. Uh, I mean the All Nighter is like a matte finish. The um, Hourglass one is more of like a natural skin finish, but I've kind of been avoiding dewy foundations lately just because I kind of recently changed, not that recent, maybe like two months ago, I changed my birth control method and since I did that, my hormones have been going crazy, like out of whack and I have been getting pimples on my face, like, and like so much texture and like little bumps, which I never had before. And all of these luminous foundations kind of just enhance all that texture on my skin even more. So I've been going more for a matte finish foundation. I've also found that these matte foundations look so, 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 so much better and 
in pictures than um, the dewy foundations do. So if you're gonna be out all night taking a lot of pictures and you know doing your selfies out at the club, having fun, I would suggest using a matte foundation. It's also better because you don't get so much oil breakout. If you have dry skin like me, just make sure you moisturize your skin really nicely and you should not have a problem with um, any type, any of these three foundations looking crusty or kind of getting like that dry patchiness on your skin. Just make sure you stay very nice and moisturized. So for today's video, which foundation do I want to use? I'm going to go in with my Hourglass foundation stick just because I was going to use a L'Oreal Pro Matte, but <laughs> it's like done. I need to forget. I'm just going to go ahead and put some swipes on my face. So... Because none of these foundations are very luminous and you know I still like to be glowy, even though I've been using matte foundations, I'm gonna go ahead and use the Cover FX Drops. These are so, so, so good. This is in the color Candlelight. I love them. They're kind of like bronzy colored. So what I like to do with these drops is I just like to dot a little bit on my face around the foundations very lightly because you know, you don't want it to get too crazy or too intense. And now I'll go ahead and blend in my foundation. Look at how funny it looks like I have a chicken box. Okay, so everyone's gonna freak out right now. But it's true. Um, I have not been using a beauty blender or a beauty sponge. I know that that's insane and it's like, oh my God, you're not using a beauty blender, but like, I'm just so over it. I discovered this brush. This is the e.l.f. Ultimate Blending Brush. I actually found it because another makeup artist that I worked on set with, um, she told me about it and I immediately went on and bought it and I'm literally obsessed with it. I'm gonna blend this out before I drive, guys, while I talk. Um, and it is just incredible. Like It blends off your foundation so nicely. So as you guys can see, I'm just doing kind of like little circular motions to blend this in. You really have to be careful with these drops. Um, if you let them sit for too long, they will dry and it'll stay like a dark splotch on your face. So you want to make sure that as soon as you put them on your face, you start blending out. I had to do a little bit of extra work today because I did let them sit for a little bit too long, but it's okay and nothing we can't fix. I'm also kind of avoiding my under eye area when I blend on the foundation. I don't like to put foundation in my under eye area just because I always know that I'm going to go in with concealer after. So there's no reason to cake up so much product down there. So the next thing I like to do is I like to go ahead and conceal. This is another product that I've been really in love with. If you are not into full coverage under eyes, you can totally skip this step. But if you're somebody that likes nice full coverage under eyes or you have a lot of darkness or you've got more mature skin and you want to kind of help cover up a little bit more of your creasing, this is the most amazing thing ever. This is like the, the little te tester sample. I have to go get a big one because I use it so much. But this is the It Cosmetics Bye Bye Under Eye. So all I do is I take a a tiny tiny i'm not sure how big the dot is the tiniest little dot because this stuff is very 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 full coverage and it's very intense so i take a tiny little dot as so and then using my morphe e23 brush which is just like a fluffy synthetic brush i get a little bit of it i put it right here where the most darkness is and then i start blending it out from there but i keep it right in my under eye area i really don't take it down and highlight with this i literally just use this to conceal and that's it. So I keep it really close in my under eye. And as you can see, it's extremely, extremely, extremely brightening. So once I've laid that down, I do take a damp blender. This is the Morphe one. If there is one sponge that I really like right now, it's the Morphe one. I love this Morphe sponge, it's awesome. And I just, obviously it's damp. I'm just gonna use this to pick up any extra product just because this is so thick and full coverage. I do like to go over it with a wet beauty blender or a wet sponge to pick up anything that we don't really need. So once that is done, you can see I've got some bright ass under eyes right now. I'm gonna go in with concealer. Honestly, the only concealer that I've been using is the Tarte Rainforest of the Seas Concealer. I've been using this concealer nonstop, whether it's on myself or on clients. I use the color Light Neutral, right? I'm sorry, Light Medium is the color that I use. So once I lay that down right in my under eye area, I like to take this and use this to highlight. Um, I love this for highlighting. It's extremely, extremely yellow, so it's extremely, extremely brightening and it's very 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 lightweight so it doesn't feel caking at all and it gives a nice coverage it's not super full coverage but it's like a really really nice like natural skin looking coverage it looks like really good so i'm gonna go ahead and apply this on my under eyes a little on my forehead 
on the tip of my nose, Cupid's bow, and a little on the chin. And, surprise, surprise, I have not been using a wet sponge to blend this out. I've actually been using, I don't even know what this is called. This was like a special brush that came with the um, Morphe Me subscription. And it was like a special edition just for Morphe Me members. I don't even know. But there is a brush from their G, from their gunmetal collection, that is just like this one. So I will put it here on the screen somewhere. I have to look it up online, but I'll put it here on the screen so you guys know which brush it is that's like the exact same brush as this one. So I'm just gonna do little pressing motions to blend all this out. I do also always apply my concealer in like a triangle shape under my eyes so that I really get a nice highlighted and lifted eye effect. Once I'm done blending it out with a brush, I like to go in with a damp beauty blender just to pick up any extra product. I just do quick little pouncing motions, nothing too intense. And again, this is just to help pick up any extra product that might have stayed that could get cakey in the under eye area, which we don't want. So now I'm gonna go ahead and start setting everything. I actually recently just got this. This is the Morphe 9C palette. This is like their contour palette. I have been loving this. I don't know what took me so long to get it, but I was at the makeup club, which is like a pro makeup store in Hollywood Beach. I will put their Instagram below. They're amazing. They have like everything. I love that place. But I picked this up while I was there and I have not stopped using it. It's so good. I don't know how I waited so long to get this and it's so affordable and inexpensive. I think it was like $19.99 for a contour palette and it's awesome. What I've actually been doing to set my under eyes is a little bit different than what I was doing in the past. I used to bake a lot, but I have not been baking. I have just found that this really cements my makeup into place and does not let it move. So I've been liking this technique so much more. What I do is I take my damp sponge and you can do this with a translucent powder. I love the RCMA powder. Sometimes I do it with RCMA, but I like to do my under eye area and any of the other areas where I put concealer. I like to do this with a banana powder because it's very brightening. So I take my damp sponge and I'm gonna rub it inside of the banana powder. Okay, I'm rubbing it in the banana powder. Now you can see that there's banana powder all over the sponge. On one side, I'm gonna take the clean side of the sponge, buff out any creases that may have formed. I got a little banana powder on my little ring. And then using the side with the banana powder on it, I'm gonna start pressing in and setting all of that area. And by doing this with a wet sponge, it's just gonna, uh, like, number one, look at how brightening that is, it's crazy. And number two, it's really just gonna cement it into place. The water kind of presses the powder into your skin and it forces the cream products to absorb it and it does not let it move. So it's like your makeup stays super airbrushed all night long. And again, remember, never do swipes, always press in. Like, look at my under eyes, not for anything. Look at my under eyes. I also like to use whatever's left over and kind of go along the edges to just blend it into the rest of my skin. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do the same exact thing to my forehead, down the bridge of my nose, um, my chin, and even a little bit on my smile lines. So basically, everywhere that we put concealer, we're gonna do this. So now to set the rest of my face, there are two products that I've been alternating between. The first one is the NARS, um, what is it called? All Day Luminous Powder Foundation. I have been loving this stuff. It's like a powder foundation, but it has luminosity to it. It's not so matte like how a MAC Studio Fix powder would be. This is like a little bit more luminous. So I've been loving this. Or I use my RCMA No Color Powder. I use one of the two. If I wanna be a little bit less full coverage, I'll use RCMA. When I wanna be very full coverage, I'll use the NARS. Let's just go all out today and use the NARS guys, might as well. So I'm gonna do the same exact thing with the powder foundation as I did with the banana powder. So what I'll do is I'll just rub a little bit in, get some of that, and start pressing it into my skin. And again, this literally just makes like your makeup last all night long. It does not move. It looks super duper airbrushed and perfect. Like it's just the craziest thing ever. So I'm just going in with this powder in all the areas that I didn't put the banana powder. So just to set the rest of my face. And then I like to just use whatever's left over on the sponge and kind of go over the edges of where the banana powder finished 
so that everything blends together so we don't have like a banana powder line and then like a powder foundation line just to make sure everything's nice and blended. So now that our faces are nice and set into place, we are going to contour. I'm gonna be using that same Morphe 9C palette. I know a lot of people are really into cream contouring. Um, I have my moments, sometimes I'm into it, sometimes I'm not. Lately, I have not been into it, I'm gonna be honest. I've just been doing a powder contour. My favorite brush to contour with has been the Morphe M403. As you can see, it's like a fluffy brush, but it's like a little tapered. So this is the front, this is the side, it's like a little bit tapered. So it gives a really beautiful blended contour finish, which I love. I'm mixing together this kind of cool toned color right here and this more warm one right here. You want something cool to kind of help create that shadow effect on your face, but you need to add some warmth to it because if not, you're gonna look like a corpse. So, let's contour. I'm gonna start my cheekbones. So as you can see, I'm holding the brush kind of far down and I like to use very light pressure. I don't like to be like, I like to use very light pressure and I'm basically just dusting it. I like to go a little bit at a time because contour can get real crazy real quick. I'm also gonna contour a little bit on my hairline up here. So I like to go like in the corners of my face so I get like a little bit of contour on each side. I don't like to contour here because Contour sucks things in, so when you contour here on the side of your face, unless you feel like you have a wide face, um, like if like this area of your face is wide, then you should contour here because it'll suck it in a little bit. But I don't feel like this part of my face is too wide. I feel like if I suck it in, I'm gonna look like an alien. Like it makes my my like this part of my face look too narrow. So I just don't really put anything there. I just put it here on my forehead, and then I use whatever's on the brush in the center. But I don't like to put too much in the center either because I feel like it makes my face look a little too round. But when I just put it on the outer corners, it gives my face like a nice dimension and like a chiseled look. I'm also gonna take whatever's all over on the brush and just go around my jawline. I don't like to put too much on the jawline area because um, it can start to look really dirty really fast. I just like to use a very, like whatever's all over on the brush just to help give a little bit more definition. So now I'm gonna take my sponge and use whatever's left over on it um, from the banana powder and like the powder foundation. I'm gonna use the powder foundation side and I'm just gonna very lightly clean up underneath of my contours. You see how that just cleans it really nicely? And I'm actually, this side got a little too crazy, so I'm just gonna dab a little bit, dab a little bit of um, <laughs> the banana powder on top of my contour. If anything ever gets too intense or too dark like with your contour, you can just go in with your banana powder or your regular powder foundation and kind of put a little bit on top and that'll kind of help to diffuse it out and make it not so intense. You know what I'm saying? It happens to all of us guys. We just, you know, we get contour happy. Let me tell you. So the contour is working, it's looking good. Let's move on to bronzer. So for bronzer, my two go-tos lately have been either, let me show you, have been either the NARS Laguna bronzer or the Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer. I love, 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 love both of these bronzers and they both smell so good. So the butter bronzer I think is like 10 bucks from the drugstore. The NARS bronzer is obviously a little bit more expensive, it's a little more pricey, but I absolutely love this bronzer. I mean, look at how much of it I've used. Granted, I do use this on clients also, it's not just myself. That's why I go through so much makeup, but um, I love Laguna. We're gonna use Laguna right now. So I'm using my MAC 135 brush. This is literally the best brush in the world. I know it's like a $40 brush and it's not the cheapest brush in the world, but if you're somebody that loves to have a nice bronze and you do your makeup all the time, invest and get it. You won't regret it. I literally use this brush every single day. And I'm just gonna go right over my contour. The difference between bronzing and contouring is, because people always ask me, because we put our bronze in the same areas that we put our contour. All that we're using the bronzer for is to help warm up the skin a little bit and to make the skin look not so cool toned from the contour, but look nice and sun-kissed, basically. When you bronze, you basically do the same thing as you do when you're contouring, you're just not so precise with it. You can be a little bit messier, blend it out a little bit further, and kind of just really blend it into the skin. And um, I don't know how else to describe it, except that bronze is basically like a messy contour, is what it is. Bronze is a messy contour. So what I do normally is I start right on top of my contour line and start contouring, and then once I see that the brush isn't letting out so much product, I start blending it upwards. And on my forehead, I kind of just dust it right on top of the contour and make sure that it looks nice and blended. Once 
I'm done bronzing those areas, I'll use whatever's left over on the brush and kind of just run it over my whole face so that I have a nice, blended, even bronze look to my face. When I do this, I do not pick up more product. I literally just use whatever's left over on the brush. So now that we've done that, we're gonna kind of start the highlighting process. Okay guys, I'm gonna be honest with you. My highlighting process is so, so, so extra on so many levels and you do not need to do all these steps, but this is what I do to myself and this is what I normally do to clients. Um, people always ask me, oh my God, how do you get like that really pretty dewy look without looking oily? And um, I'm about to show you how I do it. So the first thing that I do is I use Max Gold Deposit and I put this on top of my bronzer and my contour. To me, this is a must have in your kit. Like I always have to have this. I use it on every single client. I just think it's amazing and it gives your skin such a beautiful bronzed glowy finish. So it basically just makes your bronzer look luminous and glowy and it gives you like that J-Lo glow. So I put this right on top of all the areas where I contoured and bronzed. For my brush, I'm using the Morphe M500. I love this brush, it is amazing and it is the best brush to do this with because it's so like lightweight and fluffy that it's just just the perfect amount of product onto your face. I've said it time and time again, but I know this is a small detail and it makes a very small difference, but it's the small details that really make a difference in your makeup. The same way I did with the bronzer and contour, I'm just gonna dust some of this MAC Gold Deposit on that area that I contoured on my forehead. And then once I'm done with that, I'm gonna take the brush and use whatever's left over and dust it all over my face so I have a nice even glow and so that everything looks nice and blended. So now that we've added some glow to our bronze, I'm gonna start um, adding just some glow to the high points of my face. So I have actually been loving the highlight in this Morphe 9C palette. This highlight right here is the most subtle, beautiful glow from within, like little number that I have ever seen in my life. It's amazing. So using the same brush, I'm just gonna go into some of this and I'm gonna start putting this on the areas where I would normally highlight. So I'm gonna put it like on the top of my cheekbones, all, um, all down the bridge of my nose, my cupid's bow, my chin, a little bit on my forehead. I'm kind of just gonna put this very messily in all the areas where I would normally use a normal highlighter. And it, again, this brush is amazing for this because it gives such a like messy, blended appearance that it just gives like a really nice, soft, natural glow to the skin. So as you can see, we can already see a huge difference in the glow on the skin. Right now it's very soft and subtle and you can totally just leave it like this. You can just do those two steps and it's beautiful. It looks like a nice, simple, dewy highlight. But um, I still need more, personally. But before we put more highlight, I'm gonna go ahead and do some blush. And actually, I have been so obsessed also with the Morphe 9N palette. It's so beautiful. It has like the perfect amount of shimmers and mattes and like it's so pigmented. I just, I love it. For blush, my favorite thing to do has been to mix these three in the middle. So I start with this one and then I just like, Tap off the excess <laughs> and then I like to smile and start from about right here and press up. Oh, and the, br the brush that I'm using is the Morphe E4. This is like the best brush, blush brush ever. And of course, the blush is going right in between my contour and where that highlight kind of started. So it's going in the middle, kind of like a Napolitan ice cream. Have you guys seen that meme? That meme is so funny. And I kind of like to scoop, like go like this to give my cheek, like my the apples in my cheeks like a little bit more of like um, an apple-y appearance. And if you ever take your br your blush like too low over here and you feel like it's like touching, like almost like your lip, just take your sponge again and you can just kind of use whatever's left over on it to clean up those edges. So now that we've got that done, we're gonna go ahead and finish off the glow. Okay, I know that like I really love highlight, but I feel like this is like a whole new thing. like. This highlighter is so amazing and it actually came in my BoxyCharm last month, I believe. I can't even believe they brought this in a BoxyCharm. This is a $40 highlighter and it is the Ofra Cosmetics highlighter in the color Beverly Hills. This highlight is worth every freaking penny. It gives like that beautiful, like wet, I just got out of the pool and I'm Kim Kardashian and JLo. Um, Kim Kardashian did a lot of baby with the most perfect bomb ass highlight that ever existed. This is the most amazing thing in the world. Like I don't even know how to describe it. I'm literally so obsessed with it. It's crazy. But it is like by far my number one favorite highlighter I think of all time. So what I normally do like on a day to day normal, I'll take the really like true gold, like this gold one. Let me get a little closer so you guys can see. This gold one right here, I'll mix in a little bit of the bronze and then pick up more of the gold. Tap off the excess. 
This is my Morphe M510 brush. This is my favorite highlighting brush of all time. Since we already kind of have like a glow going, I'll just put this in the highest point of my face. So how before we were being super messy and kind of just putting it in the basic areas, now is when I'll go in and I'll spot highlight in exactly the areas that I really want to glow. Can you look at that for a second? Like, look at the difference. Bam. Huh? Bam. Now we're glowing. Now we are glowing, guys. Yes. So that is how much highlight I wear. I wear a crap load of highlight. So if you're like me, maybe you should wear this much highlight too. I always take a little bit of MAC Fix Plus when I'm done, spritz it over my whole face just to kind of intensify the highlight and to kind of make sure that all those powders sitting on my skin get nice and absorbed and doesn't look powdery on my face, that it looks like skin. This kind of helps to dilute and diffuse everything and kind of help it melt into your skin. So once I put on the Fix Plus, I like to go back in with my Smashbox Photo Finish Primer Water. I use this as a setting spray. It is an amazing setting spray. That's why I tell everybody that if you want to buy this, it's a serious investment. It's an amazing primer and it's also an amazing setting spray. Like It sets everything right into place. It's so good and it really, really, really does help your makeup last. So once I'm done with all those steps, I'm done with my face. I know it was quite a few steps. So I'm going to go ahead and finish up my eyes, pop on some lashes, put on some lips, and I'll be right back. So for lashes, I went ahead and threw on some of the Salon Perfect 615 lashes. And for lips, I'm wearing Dose of Colors Stone Liquid Lipstick. Again, if you guys want to see this eye look, I will link it below. This is like my Thanksgiving makeup look and I just went ahead and decided to do an in-depth face tutorial while I was at it. Wow, I was like, I knew. I hope this video was helpful. I hope you learned some cool tips and tricks. If you guys have any face like hacks or face things that you love to do, comment below and let me know what they are. I love trying out new techniques. Like I said before, this is just what's been working for me personally on my skin. Um, I've been loving all these products. If you love any of these products, also let me know. And if you don't love any of these products, comment below and let me know why. I love to hear how people don't love products because sometimes like you feel like you love something and then somebody's like, no, but I don't like it because of this, this, this. And then you're like, oh my God, you're right, it does do that. I don't like it either. And it's just crazy. So let me know below what products you love for the face, what products you don't like for the face. If you try any of the products I use in this video and you love them, let me know. I would love to see them. And um, I think that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.